Live on the tube. Live on the tube. On the which tube? On the YouTube. Happy Thursday. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. I like Thursdays. You know why? It's the day before Friday. It's the best day of the weekend. No. It is the best day of the weekend. It's because I'm alive to celebrate another day. I'm grateful for today. All right. That's a good attitude. All right. I'll give you that. You that. Start, start talking to us. What do we got? We are live on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. So you guys oh. know the routine. You guys know the routine. You're here to answer your loan questions, your real estate questions, programs, interest rates, credit scores, uh, scenarios. Sen scenarios is a great one right now, guys, because... We do very challenging loans. Many yeah. times a person will come to us and say, mm -hmm. we've been denied several times by my lender, by my realtor, by my this, by my broker, blah, 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 blah. And that being said, give us a shot. Give yeah. us a shot because the challenges can usually be taken care of if they're reasonable. And it's all the way you pack, all about how you <clears throat> package it, guys. Guidelines are exactly that. It's a guideline. Gives you an idea of how to move forward, but it's not absolute. Many times things can be explained in a way that makes sense to an underwriter that say approve. <coughs> so that being said, put in your questions, put in your comments, put in your scenarios because we want to help you get a home in 2024. I'm still trying to make this happen, man. Make it happen, yeah, man. We're working on it. We're working on so it. So let me cover a couple things with you guys because a big question is, can I buy a house? KK in the house. What's up, KK? What's How you up, doing? What's up, KK? We love the hearts from KK. She's always fun. Yeah. Many times people come to us and they're like, hey, I make money, but I don't have taxes. Or, hey, I make money, but I don't have pay stubs. Hey, I make money, make money, make money. Okay. So there's a scenario for everyone. There's a solution for most. So there's something called bank statement programs where you just show your bank statements. There's a program called VOE only when we only use your VOE, which is your verification of employment. There's some called um, W-2 only, 1099 only. There's DSCR. There's down payment assistance. There's so many different ways to go to help a person get into a house. It's not just I make a bunch of money and I have a bunch of money. It's, <coughs> it's a way that we approach it that helps people get into houses. But... What's going on in the markets, man? Counts is, count is going up. Let's talk about what is the direction of the interest rates. This comes from the FOMC website. That is chairman of the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell. He spoke again yesterday. And he didn't speak to the world. He just spoke in front of a college. But that's it's all every time he does it, it's a big deal. But right now, FOMC rates are at 5.25 to 5.5%. That's where the prime interest rate is. And this is the forecast all the way up until 2026 and 2027. So what the FOMC says, what this guy, chairman of the board or chairman of the Federal Reserve says, and all these people who are the members of the FOMC, every dot on here is their prediction going forward. And they all predict by the time we are in 2026 or 2027, that the federal funds rate will be at 2.5 percent you can see i have to look at it every time i don't know why 2.5 percent 2.5 percent what does that mean okay well the fed funds rate largely governs our economy it, it is a large thing of our economy it's not what the interest rates are for mortgages are based off that's based off the 10-year yield however the 10-year yield does compete with the fomc uh fed funds rate because that in turn is how much it costs to borrow money. There's a whole bunch of process behind it. But what this is saying is that the FOMC Fed funds rate will be at 2.5% at the end of 26 or 27. Interest rates are going down. That's what that's saying. All okay, right. now we all want it to happen really fast if you don't know what it'll do. If you don't know what it'll do, it will wreck our economy if it happens too fast. It will wreck it. It will be like, hey, let's do some cocaine. Cocaine? What? Yes. Oh, I don't know if I can talk about that. Anyway, let's do some of that white stuff. Cocaine's here. Yeah. I don't know. No, 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 no. Anyway, so let's do that. You are going to spike, and it's going to be amazing for a little bit. And then Crash. it's not going to be so good after that. Withdrawals. So that's what the federal, that's what the chairman of the Federal Reserve and the entire Federal Reserve is trying to prevent. And they know it's cycles. They know everything's in cycles. So they're trying to maintain 
the cycles, maintain the cycles. And they have, this guy actually came out and says, I believe we've reached the peak of the economic cycle and we are in the pause. They call the pause, we're not moving anything, the pause, that's where we're at. And what we're looking for is the pivot. The pivots when we start going down. And Wall Street is saying that's gonna happen in June. Nice. June. Nice. What do you think, man? Well, yeah, we gotta listen to everybody else because that's where we get the data from. And who knows that they're telling us the truth. But there is know, something man. that I do know that you guys need to get your ready, your phones ready to screenshot because it's time for a commercial. If you need a badass loan, call a badass loan officer. You can reach your badass loan officers, Chris and Lee, at New American Funding. You can do that by calling the number on the screen. Don't call right now because we're live and we won't answer. Duh. Anyway, wait till after the conversation. We'll talk to you then. Let's get it going. All right. Tasha, what's up? KK, thanks for the love. Nathaniel in the house. What's Nathaniel up? said up? that he wants to buy a home but doesn't have any money saved up. Is he still able to buy a house? Maybe, Nathaniel. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I'm going to shoot the truth to you. Here's the truth. Here's the truth. Depends on how much money you make and which credit score is. If you don't have any money saved up, you got to have pretty good income because the next thing everybody's going to say is, hey, zero down program, down payment assistance programs. And that's true. They do exist. But if you don't make enough money, it's going to drop you down to your buying power drops a lot. I'll give you an example. Let's say I qualify you for $400,000, 400 on an FHA loan. You bring in 3.5%. You're like, hey, Lee, that's great. 400%, 400,000, 3.5%. Then you say, oh, I want a down payment assistance program. Cool. You have a great credit score and you've got income. I'm going to requalify everything and you're going to be qualified for 320,000. Wait a minute, Lee, you told me 400,000. I did, I did. If you're bringing your own money in and you put your own skin in the game, 400 grand. But if you're asking for somebody else's skin to be in the game, they throttle back the buying power and they don't let you redline it. That makes sense, right? Everybody says, well, since you put it that way, Lee, I guess it makes sense. Yeah, that's how it works. So if you've got good income, good income and good credit, you could do it 620 is going to be a problem 620 is going to be a big problem nathaniel big problem why because you earned that 620 how did you earn it somebody lent you money and you didn't pay back to the terms because if you would you did it would be higher so that comes to play when we move forward to get you qualified for a loan on an fha loan the minimum is 580 for a 3.5 percent down for Fannie Mae, 620, but that's just barely qualifying. That's barely qualifying. If you're sitting at a 620 and you want a um, down payment assistance program, 99% are gonna tell you no, no. We have one that will tell you yes, but we have 99% of the programs that we work with will be like 620, sorry, yeah, yeah, no, just no, no, no. We need 660, preferably 680. So where you should be, if you can, is your high 700s to low 800s. That's where you should be if you can. How do you get there? Shocker. You borrow money, you pay it back as agreed, and never be late. If you do that, your FICO score will go up, 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 up. Fast? No, no, no. It takes a long time. Anyway, moving along. Godfather Zapata, thank you for the love. <clears throat> appreciate you guys following us. We appreciate you. We're fourth working on your real, loans. Fourth, 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 the real LS. Oh. For the real LS. For the real LS. I'm I ready think to buy my LS, second property. I think of LS as Chevy an engine. Motor. Yeah, look at you. You know you're you're shit, at me, man. I know more than everybody. You know more than everybody? I'm the smartest man in, in the world. I'm a, you're Jesus a legend himself. in your own mind, dude. You're Jay, a fucking legend so what? in Jay, your own 3, mind. 3131, can I add a cosigner to qualify for a loan even though the cosigner doesn't have a job? Why? Why? Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's look at each other and say that. Why? Yeah, so why? 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 So. If you're putting somebody on a loan, they've got to be a net positive to the loan most of the time. Sometimes we get a husband and wife couple where the, either the husband or the wife says, hey, I want to be on the loan. Cool. There's, there's no net positive to it, but we want to be on the loan. Okay, cool. So husband and wife, that work. But if you're putting somebody on the loan, they've got to be a net positive. And a FICO score is just a loan without any income is not a net positive. It's not. Why? Because two people on the loan, we get to go, hey, you got an 800 FICO score. That's great. Your other cool borrower has 620. Oh, that's important too. Why? Because the only thing we use is a 620. We use the lower of the borrowers in most scenarios. Most of the time, we play chess. Most of the yeah, time. Yeah. 
most of that. And what that means is we can kind of predict what's going to happen. And in this one, Nathan, or J3131, we missed it. He's saying he's retired. Okay, so we'll get means... to that. Oh, we're going to get to that. Yeah, we're going to get to that. So if you have no income from a job, but you've got pension income, Social Security income, let's say you won the lottery and you got that type of income, divorce income, alimony income, child support income with more than three months, three years left. There's a lot of things that can provide you income. As long as I have some sort of income, then I calculate that income and then I pull your liabilities. Because if you have $2,000 in income and you have $3,000 in liabilities, you're still not a net positive to the loan. I have to make sure you're a net positive to the loan. If you are, absolutely, we want you on the loan. Yeah, and I was actually gonna bash you a little bit. I was gonna say, don't what, be you gonna, bashing, you gonna dude. Put we're your... not gonna get loans by bashing people. Actually, the truth is, I was like, gonna say, what yeah. are you gonna put your girlfriend on there just to make Damn. her happy? Damn, but that's not the case. Dude. That's not the case. Damn, I'll back off. Damn, I'll yeah. back off. Damn. Rustic Oak, can you use an FHA loan on a homestead? Um, so. Homestead, I don't know what you're talking about, homestead, in your context. Here's what it means in my context, okay? my I own a house in Texas. Texas allows a homestead. Homestead gives you a bit of an exemption, just a bit, on taxes and a bit of protection legally. It's not some kind of special anything. Once you own the property you can claim it as your homestead. And then they give you a bit of advantage in taxes and a bit of legal coverage. It gets complicated, but a bit of legal coverage. But it's not a program. So when you own the property, they don't care what kind of loan you had. They don't care if it's a VA, FHA, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, USDA. They don't care if you got it from a loan shark up in New York that will break your legs if you didn't make the payments. All they care is you're the owner of the property. So. I'm going to say, yeah. Okay. Right long, on. Way, long way to say yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, for the real LS, back to that one, you said you were ready to buy your second property. Clarify that. Are you going to sell your house and buy another property, or are you going to buy a totally different second home, like a vacation home? So please clarify that mm -hmm. so we can guide you down the path correctly. Mike, how does escrow work for tax and insurance? Can you put can you put in 6 k in the escrow so it won't be billed? Um, okay, Mike, 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 Mike. Mike, you got to pay attention to this, okay? When we build your loan, we make a choice, impound or not impound. We recommend impound. I've done both, and I always go back to impound. But when we make that choice, you have told the bank, hey, listen, I want you to calculate into my monthly payment the taxes that are due twice a year and the insurance that's due once a year. Even though I'm billed monthly, I pay annually. So that's called an escrow impound account. Now there's two ways to look at escrow. One of them is the non-biased third party that helps the real estate transaction close. That is an escrow. But then there's your impound account also referred to, I don't know if it's accurate or not, but as your escrow account. So if you want to prepay something in your escrow account, that's usually a bit problematic. Here's why because the banks aren't in a hurry to find out whether you owe money or you don't owe money. They've got a system and once a year, the system audits the loan. They say, hey, did we pay enough property taxes? Did we collect enough for the yearly premium for the insurance? If that happens, then they say, cool, we keep this payment. If it doesn't, they say, hey, there was a shortage. And they're gonna say, hey, there was a $600 shortage. So in order to make up for this, you can either write a check for $600 or we can increase your monthly payment by X in order to cover that and the money going forward. If you do nothing, they'll do that one. So if you want to prepay something, you might have done it and you'll have more money in your escrow account. But then you have to force the bank to do an audit. So you have to call the servicing division of the bank and say, hey, I put more money into the escrow account. Can you please do a mortgage audit? And they will say, why, sure, we will be happy to. We'll be back in about 30 to 45 days and let you know what we came up with. And when they do, not always works out the way you want it to. Eventually, it will balance out. Nobody's going to steal your money. But I've had a lot of people try that. They're like, hey, I'll pay extra into the account. Yeah, not always the smartest 
thing to do. And why do you want to lock up your money and hold it hostage yeah. for taxes? Yep. So there's a lot going on there. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Hey, appreciate you guys for following us. Big Boy 63. Damn, he's like, hey, what do I want my handle to be? Where's that at? Dude, you're Big Boy 93. 93. Come Sorry. on, man. Big, Big Boy, boy in the house. He's like, Cassandra, I'll be Big Boy. Like, all right, let's try Big Boy 01. Nope, that didn't work. 02, nope. All the way up to 92. Shit, that one's taken too? 93. Money. Got it. Yeah. User 8308. <coughs> what if you had a good credit and already have a property but want to buy as a rental? You take it. Okay. So that's for people who are trying to build themselves. That's not typically the way it happens unless you fell into a windfall of cash. Because if you're trying to buy an investment property and you already own a home that you're going to stay in, you're going to come on, come out of pocket about 15% minimum minimum okay usually 20 usually 20 and then on the, in addition to that you're going to have something called reserves which means that your rental property and your current home you're going to need to save a certain amount of money which is your monthly payment times six months all the way up to 24 months depending on your file depending on your credit depending on your history that type of thing so you're going to need more money what traditionally people do is they move out of their existing home rent that one to buy another primary what that does is it allows you to put the minimum down payment which depending on where you live and where you buy could be fha at three and a half percent or conventional at five percent down payment and then your reserves actually may not even kick depending on your situation depending what's also cool about moving forward this way is that your existing mortgage that your that house you're going to rent we can make that mortgage payment look as if it doesn't exist at the moment so when you're buying your new home we can get you more purchase power. And in California here, you need as much as you can get. It's so expensive. New York, Florida, they're all dealing with kind of the same thing. But I hope you get what I'm saying. So the answer is, yes, you can buy a rental property, keep your current as your primary, or rent out your primary and then buy your another primary. So can you do it? Lots yes, of you, ways can. you can. Go. Can you do it? Yes, you can. Right. Zam Jungle. Why killed me? Why to? I don't know what that means. Why? Why? Killed me. I don't know what. Why, why, why? why Zami Jungle. Guys killed me. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. Elena, thank you for the love. <coughs> and is it true they overqualify you? They overqualify you. What does that mean? I think she's saying that you're overextending yourself and they're letting you borrow more money than you can afford. Every single borrower that I have wants to borrow more, man. Every borrower I got wants more. Give me less. More. Give me yeah. less. <laughs> yeah. Every borrower I have wants more. If I qualify you for 600000 they want seven. I qualify for seven. They want eight. That's just the world we live in. Nice. J3131, my pops had a cosign on three houses. So your dad has has cosigned three times already? That's badass, man. Other people? Pops must be loaded. Kids? Yeah, pops must be rolling, man. Everybody's like, hey, pops will help you. Pop, I, Let's get him, man. Pops I, will help you. I think you need to reach out and let's add Gina you pops. Gina Craig, follow. Appreciate you, Gina. Rennick Guzman, I have a good down payment, but do you recommend getting a HELOC for a second home? Well, if you have a good down payment already, already, yeah, probably not because you're yeah. going to take on more debt, which is going to give you another payment. So probably not. What I would recommend is the way you sit right now, let us pre-qualify you. Let's see how it looks. If you need more money, then we can talk about that down the road. Yep. But I wouldn't advise taking money out before you speak to us, Lorena. <coughs> Hope that helps. Turtle Hurdle. Like Turtle Hurdle. When they rhyme, when they put some yeah, thought into you, it. Thought. Mine says Chris Dominguez, yeah. but that's badass. What happens when I turn my primary into a rental? Somebody else moves in, they pay rent, and you make money and get rich. And depending on where you live, they might never yeah. leave. Yeah, they might never <laughs> leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God bless Florida. Yeah. User 1271, how do you get money back at closing? Is it asking for money as a closing cost? So the only way you get money back at closing, I'm going to suspect that you are in the business, probably a realtor. So- you put something down called EMD, earnest money deposit. And you say, hey, listen, I'm willing to put in $3,000 as an EMD. 3,000, cool, 3,000, all right, cool. And then we use programs, we use the down payment assistance program, we use the seller's concession, and all the fees are covered. You can get back your EMD, $3,000. You can't get back more than that. That's illegal, it's called a kickback. But you can get back your EMD. That's how you get money back at closing. Turn a hurdle. Let me expand on this one. What happens when I turn my primary into a rental? I don't really understand the question, but it applies to what I said to the person up top, which was if you turn your primary into a rental, 
we can ignore that payment as if you don't own a home to buy another primary residence. Primary means the house you live in primarily, okay? It's your primary residence. So it helps when you're buying the second house. Unless you have a lot of money and you have a lot of cash, then you could buy a second home, put the down payment, keep moving, keep moving, keep adding, keep adding. But sort of hurdle, hope that helps. Smiley, I live in Florida. God bless Florida. But want to move to Texas to buy. How? Okay, cool. So what you do is you call U-Haul and you find out if they've got any trucks available. And if they say yes, you say, I will take one. And then you point that west. What if you don't have a lot of stuff? Do you need a truck? What about a van? Van down by the river? Hey, could wherever be. you want to yeah. live makes could you happy. Be, could be, could be. So if you already have a house in Florida, what we want to do is either sell it or rent it. If you're trying to get rich, I recommend you rent it. Why? Because real estate is probably one of the best investments long-term of all of them, as long as you do it correctly. If you do it incorrectly, it will bite you. But if you already have a house, I recommend we rent it. And then we figure out what type of loan is on it. If it's an FHA loan, we may want to refinance prior to you renting it to a convert to a conventional. If it's a VA, we definitely want to refinance to a conventional because that will free up your ability to get an FHA loan or a VA loan in Texas. Then see the first comment. Get a U-Haul, move to Texas. Stand in line by a million guns. Yep. A million guns. Yes. Mike, thanks. M, <clears throat> if, you, if you will be getting raises, should you wait or is it taken into consideration? Good, good question, question. That's a pretty good question. Yeah. So it depends on how you're getting those raises. If I can get a letter from your job that says you will be getting a raise on this day in salary or guaranteed 40 hours a week, I can probably use that raise before you get it. I just need solid documented proof that is not ambiguous. It can't be, we sh you know, you should be getting a raise around January 1st. It can't be that. It has to be, you will absolutely be getting a raise January 1st. And then I could submit that to an underwriter and nine times out of 10, 10 times out of a 10, I get that approved. Yeah, nice. <clears throat> M. Our user 1217, you got me. Mm -hmm. I'm a realtor asking about money back question. Yeah, 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 Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Where are you not, a realtor it's, at? It's really not that difficult, man. With the people that ask the questions, we do know, we kind of get it. And we, we have a lot of loan officers who come on board to learn the business. It's fun. I love it. I actually love it. They say in, imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. And we get a lot of LOs on here. We get a lot of realtors on here. We appreciate you guys. I never try and push you away. Never, 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 never. We're a big community. Sure, you're my competitor. No no ifs, ands, or buts. But like the boxing community. Hey, you know what? Only if we're going head-to-head -head in the ring tonight, are you going to be my adversary. Other than that, we're kind of in a big community that we all kind of take care of each other yep. and respect each other. Heads up, though. If we go head to head, I will win. <laughs> and also, when when other loan officers come in here and they're trying to disguise themselves, yeah. they ask scenarios. Yeah, yeah. And I love it because yeah. them asking the scenario allows you guys to absorb all the information and everyone gets an education. So it's actually a really good thing. And I'm encouraging you guys to give us more scenarios. Like, you know, 580 score, little down payment. That's easy stuff. Give me a real challenging scenario. Maybe something where you got denied. Maybe something where you were an escrow and it fell out. Those are the ones that I want. Gift of equity from someone that's not entirely a relative. Can you pull that off? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Have you done it? Yeah. Done it. Absolutely. Cool. That's a lot. And this Gift is what equity. I mean yeah. by guidelines is a guideline. Okay. Yeah. It's not an absolute. Mm -hmm. If you can if you can really share your information correctly and clearly, the underwriters take it into consideration, yeah. guys. So if you're if you're having a hard time, mm -hmm. give us a shot. We're gonna help you guys out. Yep. Uh, wishing and hoping for the best. Thank you very much. Send all the documents. Diaz. We're here for you. Is We're here for you. Is that Cassandra? Oh, no, is that we, you? We hope so. We hope so. As the baby LO, it's flattering. You guys rock. I appreciate you, Zammy Zammy Jungle. I appreciate you very much, very much, very much. And if you have any questions, I mean, even like I say, if you got questions, put them on here. You can even call us. Yeah. I actually tell people, hey, listen, here's what I'm going to do. They're like, hey, Lee, I wish I chose you before, but I already got my LO. And I don't know if he knows what you know. So tell him, call me. Just have him call me. Yep. I, I get it, but sometimes, sometimes the limiting factor is the bank. 
sometimes where you work has overlays. Now, the way it works in the industry is if you work for a very large bank, then they're already Fannie Mae Direct, uh, Freddie Direct, VA Direct, FHA Direct. They can do alt QMs. They got a lot of money and a, big, and a good reputation. That's why we work for New American Funding. But a newer bank, a newer bank that's just starting out, has what's called overlays. They're not allowed to do everything that a straight bank can do. Mm -hmm. And they're growing themselves. I don't hate those guys. I get it. But they can't do as much as everybody else. Where I run into this a lot is VA loans. VA loans. They're like, hey, uh, I heard that you need a 620 for a VA loan. I'm like, nope. If, if your loan officer told you your bank needs a 620, then they're probably right. They, you probably do at their bank. But the VA guideline does not have that. In fact, VA doesn't even look at FICO score. They do look at credit history, but FICO score is not a determining factor. The determining factor on a VA loan is residual. And unless you're experienced in the business, you don't know that. Yeah, Dennis the Tech Guy. What's up, my man? What's so up, I, Dennis the Tech Guy? I love the teamwork and sense of community. Appreciate it, yes. man. Appreciate Lance. it. We're here for you, my man. Lance Elliott, what are the loan options to buy a gutted house and fix myself? Yeah, that's easy, Lance. That's easy. Very easy. You can't buy FHA, so take that off the table. You can't buy VA, so take that off the table. You can't buy USDA, so take that off the table. All you got left, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, or AltQM. That's it. Why? Because VA and FHA and USDA all want move-in ready, not gutted homes. It has to be live, livable like right now or within 30 days if you use a 203k loan. Yeah. So let's talk about the 203k loan. All right. Cool. Talk it's about it. It's a major pain in the ass. It is. It sucks. It is not an easy process. We but, don't like it. But for Lance, yeah. this could work because yeah. he's talking about a house that's already gutted. Not a whole lot of people are looking at it. Only investors are looking at it. The... Uh, the regular financed people that are not looking at it because their agents like you can't get that you can't get that you can't get that but a 203k if you have the time the energy and find the right contractor here's the thing about contractors guys this is where it really gets hung up is these guys swing hammers and put up drywall and lay floors they do great work but they're not great with paperwork so we need certain bonding certain licenses <coughs> this document filled out this number blah 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 so if you have a good contractor that or a good that has a good secretary that can get all that data then a 203k loan would be a good option it will allow you to buy the house with three and a half percent it will allow you all the benefits of fha but mm -hmm. it is a very challenging program that needs time so if you have that lance we're only Kansas. we could probably make that happen yeah we work in all 50 states by the way one of the reasons we work at naf it, NAF is New American Funding. The, one of the reasons we work at NAF is because we can do all 50 states. When you're a large footprint loan officer like we are, we're large footprint all 50 states, then you need a bank that can do all 50 states and can do very difficult loans. That's why we work here. Yeah. That does, that's not to say anything bad about your local bank. Sometimes the local banks are great. Sometimes they're amazing. But they don't really go after all 50 states, so that's not their business model. Our business model is all 50 states. We can do all 50 states. Zam Jungle back in the house. Yeah, my bank is very conservative with overlays. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's a, it, we all got to learn somehow. And by the way, I say things that took me years to learn as a loan officer because most of the time, the loan officers I talk with, even the high-level managers, if you've only worked for direct lenders, you only know direct lender. If you've only worked for brokers, you've only worked for brokers. And if you don't have a wide enough way of looking, you think, my way is the best. My way is the best. I will tell you that I've been on both. I've seen both, and I've been in finance since 1992. Neither one is best, best. It's Ford and Chevy. It's not, it's, it's, neither one is best, best. There are reasons why you would go with one. There are reasons why you'd go with others. There are pros to either. I could shoot at either one of them and bury them. And that's the problem if somebody's come up against Chris and I is that I actually know the way it works. I'll teach you guys as an LO if you want to learn and just give you the questions to ask. Just a few questions. It'll blow you away. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to piggyback on that again because what he said is accurate. What he said without even saying it is mentorship. Finding someone that actually is worthy to mentor under. Someone that's been through the trenches. Someone that's seen the problem. Someone that's turned things around. And we were very lucky at the beginning of our careers. We had someone that was great during that time, taught us a lot. And I recommend the same thing for you too, Zam Jungle, because this is a tough business. And if you don't have someone in your corner that knows their stuff, it is very hard. And you're gonna, you could be the LO that tells their realtors or their borrowers a lot that it doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work. And they get enough of those, they stop working with you. But if you're the person who says, let me see how I can make this work, then you become a different asset yeah. to them. 
Uh, she's in New York. Okay, I'm in New York. It may be different, but anyway, let's to any way to make a undock borrower work with an expired visa. So yes, there is, but you're probably not going to like it. So there are what's called uh, foreign national programs. A foreign national program, it, it's going the easy thing is 20% down. So you got to start right there, 20% down, and that excludes most people. So there are. I did one with the. HV1 visa probably a month ago something like that and they were trying to be US citizens they didn't want to be US citizens they were moved in from India they worked for Google and with that I was able to get them in for 3.5 percent down because the guideline allows it but everything has to be current and you have to get a letter from the employer stating that they work here and they intend on working here for a certain period of time so that did work for that person but that's 3.5 percent down now if you have an expired anything anything you're gonna have trouble anything so if you're gonna have trouble you got to go to alt qm alt qm zami jungle in case you didn't know there's qm from your lo teaching qm is qualified mortgage qualified mortgage is a category the category is fha fannie mae va freddie mac and usda and maybe a few others but that's the majorities right there so those are QM and QM has to fall within certain guidelines. So those are your low down payments, 3% down, 3.5% down, 5% down. Those are your low down payment QMs. Once you can't do that, you have to go to an alternative to QM. So that's called Alt QM. Alt QM. And Alt QM loans are like, hey, we are not QM. We need way more money down, way more. And when you gave me that expired visa, the only thing I come up with right away, for Nationals program, for Nationals starts at 20% down. Now, if you can meet that 20% down criteria, then it doesn't matter where they're from. The, the Alt-QM program, for Nationals program, will allow that to happen. We have had situations where we have to do taxes in a different country and verify the taxes in a different country. But the truth for the bank is that they've got so much skin in the game, they're not really worried about you defaulting. They do worry about um, illicit, illegal money, however it's coming in, people trying to launder money, trying to do things. So they do their checks to make sure that it's not going to hit that box, but they can be done. All this stuff can be done. Do me a favor, guys, all the millions and millions of you out there, can you give us a bunch of likes and shares right now? We're trying to get yeah. into the algorithm yeah. so more people can come in and ask these questions, okay? Bunch of likes, a bunch of shares right now. Yeah. I really appreciate it, yeah. guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Rabbit. Rabbit, your name's actually Rabbit? Rabbit, we love that. Rabbit gave us a rabbit. Yeah, Rabbit, Rabbit, Rabbit. That's pretty damn badass. Okay, now when it comes to, okay, so here's the hangups, guys. A lot of, if you had a bankruptcy, this 10 year thing floats around and I don't know why. Like, can't do anything for 10 years. I'm screwed for 10 years. Yeah. Foreclosure. I can never buy a house again. I, you know, yeah. things happen. Yeah. That's not true, guys. So if you know anybody or if you had a bankruptcy, if you're going to buy a house, all you have to do is see, let it be seasoned from the dismissal date for two years. Dismissed. Two years. Yeah, not, it doesn't matter when you filed. That's Matters, not a bad yeah. punishment. I mean, yeah. you, you said, hey, man, I give up. I throw in the towel. I file Chapter 7 bankruptcy. Two years, you can buy a house. If you're not that person, mm -hmm. if you if you say, hey, man, I hit hard times and I want to make this right, but I do want to pay, and you get into a Chapter 13, which is a reorganization of your bills and your payments, mm -hmm. all you got to do is have those payments on time for 12 months, one year. Whoever's well, sending all this, I really appreciate what is that. It? What is on it? What TikTok, we got thumbs up. We got three fingers up. I think it's the... the, the Five-finger death punch? No, the salute from... Uh, uh, what was that? Oh, come on. You're killing me, Smalls. Dude, I'm killing you, Smalls. What is it? Uh, Tell us what uh, it is. What's the... Mockingbird, Mockingbird. <laughs> Love that shit, man. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Mockingjay. The, the Mockingjay. What is that? Oh, come on. Yeah, help me. Somebody help this guy What's with the, the mocking Mockingjay. Jay? What's the Mockingjay? Where, uh, who, who, what, where, oh. why, and how? Who, what, where, why, and how, guys? One of the best kind of movies around. It was cool. All right. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So Hunger yeah. Games. Hunger Games. Oh, I've never seen Hun it. You haven't? Never. Oh, dude, ever, I got something for you. Dude, ever, on a ever, weekend, I did ever. this with my mom. Jennifer Lawrence. Yes, Jennifer Lawrence, yeah. I like so that. On a weekend, I said, hey, mom, 
We're gonna we're gonna watch Hunger Games. She comes down from she's from New Mexico. She comes down, spends like hey, five go days. Hey, go easy, Christian. Go and we easy. try and we try and go. We try and do like a movie a night because we're it's a family thing. So I'm like, hey, let's watch a series. Let's watch the Hunger Games. Oh, she was glued, man. Hunger Games is a great. It's kind of like a family for thing. for the kids too. Uh, not too young of kids, but yeah, for the kids too. What about the dog? Cool. Um, the dog will be love it. <laughs> the dog right. will love it. Yeah, the dog cool. will love it. Yeah, Dennis yeah, yeah, yeah. even Christian comes in. Dennis yeah, comes yeah, yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm missing out. Yeah, they're very good. I'm missing out. It's a very good thing, and it's kind of like how they're being the world's being manipulated, and it's this thing. It's like the Matrix. Mm. If you watch Matrix, you're like, I see a lot of parallels to this, and it's to the a real world. Sc- yeah, to like, like where you, we you see Matrix, right? You of see course. Matrix, yeah, right? Yeah. So you can't say of course and not see Matrix. Right? Yeah, yeah. I also so, haven't seen that other one. What's the other one with the Vikings and all that? Uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, oh, I Game of Thrones. Seen that either. That's that's a but that's not a small commitment. That's a big commitment. Okay. Hunger well, Games anyway, is a smaller commitment. Yeah, it's a it's a three day four day commitment of an hour of a movie a night. It, you can make it a family thing. It, it's a good enough where the whole family will be glued. Okay. Like everybody everywhere. But anyway, it draws parallels because like, if you watch the Matrix and you go, hey, they're manipulating us, and you're like, hey, that's kind of like what's going on. Hunger Games is kind of the same thing. It's like, hey, they got everybody focused on this bullshit, so they. Don't look at all the other bullshit. And then you're like, hey, P. Diddy just got. <laughs> and you're like, hey, this, this is Hunger Games. Yeah, anyway. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, so when it comes to challenges, guys, foreclosure, same thing. If you've lost a house, like a lot of us did in 2008, a lot of people hit bad times. A lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of people lost their houses. It's only a small period of time so you can buy again, guys. So if you did have a foreclosure, FHA says, Three years, you can buy a house. So bankruptcy, two years. Foreclosure, three years. FHA, we can put a lot of people into homes. And here's why I'm hammering this home, guys, is because the rents, the rates start coming down. The values are going to start rising. It's going to happen, yeah. I keep telling it. Yeah. I keep saying it. Yeah. There's been a lot of people on this feed that said it's already <clears throat> happening back east. And it's inevitable. Yeah. It, it, hindsight is 2020. So if yeah. you look behind us, the, the year 2020, yeah. that's what happened. Rates went down and values yeah. went boom. And a lot of people got... House rich. Yeah. The best time to buy the house was during the real estate crash. That's the best time to buy the house because they were the lowest. He says, Lee's up on his pop culture. I'm just a conspiracy theorist. He's a very trendy dude. Very. I I think the whole world's a scam. I think the banking system's a scam. I think the Federal Reserve's a scam. I think everything's a scam. I do. But I also understand that unless you're one of the top guys, and I'm not one of those. I wish I was, but I'm not. And unless you're one of those top, top guys, you kind of got to learn the rules so you can bend them like an artist. I do bend the rules a lot like an artist. I don't break them. I don't. I do bend them. I bend them like an artist. And when they're, I can help people get homes because of this. I can help people understand finance because of this. Everything's a gigantic scam. If you don't believe me, Hey, check out the Federal Reserve. Is it the U.S. government's Federal Reserve? No, it's a private entity. Wait, what? Can we audit the Federal Reserve as a government? No, we're not allowed to audit the Federal Reserve. Why? Because it's a private company. Dig into that, it'll make you go crazy. Oh, you're putting out the anti-capitalist vibe, dude. dude. Are you a Dem? What? Are you a Dem? No, dude, no. No, 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 no. (laughs) I bleed orange. Red, orange. white, blue, and orange. What's orange? <laughs> orange man. Dude, you uh, orange orange man bad. Orange I support man bad. him, no, but I'm not, not going to let him in my body. <coughs> yeah. Orange weird. man. No, no. Yeah, it's so scary. You're right, Christian. You're absolutely yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So let's see. what The Federal Reserve, by the way, for uh, there's a few LOs on here. This is the FOMC Fair Open Markets Committee is what that stands for. And right now we are 5.25 and 5.5. There are 12 members on the Federal Reserve. 12 members. They're all smart people too, by the way. They're ridiculously, unbelievably educated and smart. And they all believe right now we should be at 5.5, 5.25. But if you go forward in time, in about uh, six months, they don't believe the same things anymore. This Every dot represents their vote. And this is where they're all saying, one of them says we should be at 6.25. What? They think we should bring the rate up. Mm-hmm. One of the 12 members thinks we should bring the rate up. Wait a minute. What? So this guy gets appointed by the president and then approved by the Senate. That's the chairman of the Federal Reserve. But he's like the uh, chief justice in the Supreme Court. He, he kind of runs things, but he doesn't have any more vote than anybody else. They all vote together. Now, their consensus 
over the next two to three years is rates are going to go down. And because of that, we can plan what's going to happen. People are like, hey, should I refinance right now? And I'm like, well, depends, but probably not. Why probably not? Because if you're a loan officer that's trying just to make a commission every time somebody refinances, they're going to tell you to refinance every time it goes down 50 basis points or 75 basis points or 100 basis points. Anytime they can legally make it work, they make a commission. But I'm going to tell you that if you're going to do it properly for business reasons, you should wait till it hits the bottom, which is going to be somewhere around 26 or 27. Refinance once and then buy it as deep as you can. Never touch that loan again. Yeah, hey guys, I, I'm I'm learn I I don't know this social I don't know TikTok. We got, we got we're on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. But TikTok, I've been watching it at night a little bit, and I don't normally watch TikTok. But here's what I'm noticing: is that we want to get our likes up. We're at 1.1 1. thousand. Let's yeah. see if we can get that thing to 2,000 guys, because that's what the people say on TikTok. And then there's another thing that says I got zero out of ten stars. How do we get the 10 out of 10 stars? Who in here actually knows TikTok that can help us? Sometimes with this? people jump in and they give us hearts, they give us mustaches, and, and they I give don't us. I know what they're doing. Yeah, and we have heard, found out that we make, I don't know, six bucks a month or 10 bucks a month or whatever. We're not big rock stars on, on, on any of the platforms. What we are is loan officers that actually produce. We actually close loans. We help people with difficult situations. So, because of that, because of that, we can give you the real advice from somebody in the field. Yeah. There's a big difference between, I've, I've had producing loans, um, managers and non-producing managers. And my, even though the producing manager is my competitor, I would rather have him than a non-producing sales manager. Why? <clears throat> because he feels it. If you are not in the arena and you, you've got a loan falling apart, you don't know what it feels like. And it's a feeling. If you actually care about the people, it, it, it hurts. It sucks. I've had situations where it's like, hey, yeah, but he lied to you. Yeah, he did. He did. <clears throat> but I still want to make this loan work. You're right. I can step away from it, but I want to make it work. So let me back up and hit this again. And I care about my clients and you feel it. When you have a producing loan officer, manager, he feels it. He feels it. Mm -hmm. So my because i've been back and forth you know should i have a non-producing because you're producing loan officers my competitor straight up my competitor and then i was like man i don't know if i want to be in business with someone who's competing with me after doing this for a long time i'm like no i want somebody in the arena i want somebody who feels it who feels it i have a manager who like manager i talk to him on loan problems probably once a week because we're very self-sufficient but he, he produces a lot but he feels the problems he feels it so when, it's, when we step in with a problem, we're like, hey, how do I solve this? And he's like, well, let me try this. Let me try this. Let me try this. So that's how this business works. And for you LOs who are here, I appreciate you guys. We appreciate all of you guys. Yep. Loving the hearts, <clears throat> loving the shares. Thank you very much. And it's time for a commercial. If you need a badass loan, call a badass loan officer. You can reach your badass loan officer at New American Funding by calling Chris and Lee at the numbers on the screen. This will disappear in five, four, three, two, one, bye. Bye bye. Cool. Um, is there an app so you can check the rates? Christian Noel, I recommend take the screenshot right now. Mm -hmm. Text one of us. We'll send you a link of where you can check these bad boys daily. With yeah. that being said, what are today's rates, Lee? Today's rate. So here's Christian. I think she's the LO, right? She's the well, no, that was Zami Zami. Yeah, so the um we have a link and here's the catch. Your rate is specific to you, Christian. It's specific to you. And you'll hear us say this all the time. This is not an offer to lend. Why? Because I'm just giving you what the company's blasting out. That is not your rate. Okay? I am a NMLS licensed loan officer, 944254. He is... 10669588. And that's legal. We have to put that all the time. Our company is 6606. So we're licensed loan officers. And in order to give you a legal quote, I have to pull your credit. I have to pull your credit. I can't go off of what you give me. I have to pull your credit. I have to calculate your income and I have to calculate your assets and build your file. And then I give you your quote. What's your however, social? however, I can tell you that if you went to the New American Funding website right now, they would say that a 15-year conventional is 5.625%. 5.625%. A 30-year conventional, I'm sorry, 30-year FHA is 5.75%. And a 30-year VA is 5.75%. But let me give you a little hack. As soon as you look right below at the APR, which is the law, you have to, if you're going to disclose interest rate, you have to disclose APR. 
So right below that APR on a 30 year fix, you're going to see 5.75 and then you're going to see 6.9 APR. And you're going to go, whoa, what's the difference? As a loan officer who's been doing this for a long time, I know that in order to get down to 5.75, you have to buy the rate down, which increased your APR. That's why they mandate that, by the way, so that you can do some math really fast. And I know that on a 30 year fix, 5.75 with an APR of 6.4, you have to buy down the rate. Then you look at the asterisk and it'll tell you how much you have to buy down. So what is today's rates? You, uh, New American Funding is putting out 5.625 for a 15 year and 5.75 for a 30 year FHA and VA. Now, your APR will always be higher than your interest rate. Always, always. Because there's going to be some fees that are built in there. No matter what, they're built in there. And the APR is, hey, this is my interest rate, but after I put in all the other fees, this is my adjusted. That's my APR. So that's what that is. Yeah. Cassandra, <coughs> I knew it was you. Yeah, we're going to get you some answers. Hopefully today, okay? We're going to work on that real hard for you. Um, but guys, I want to share with you. Credit. Let's talk about credit for a second, okay? Credit is very important when getting a loan. It is. It absolutely is. Whether you're buying a house, car, getting a credit card, whatever it is. That being said, a lot of people tell me, hey, are you going to do a hard pull? Are you going to pull my credit? Or is it going to affect me negatively? And the truth is, this is it, guys. This is just it. If your credit's trending up, if you're making your payments mm -hmm. on time, if you're not going to Kohl's to get 20% mm -hmm. off, Home Depot to get 20% off, and doing all that funny business and pulling your credit left and right, it shows that you have discipline. And you know if you have good credit. So those who are so yeah. worried about getting their credit pulled, yeah. get it pulled anyway, especially if it's us. Here's why. Yeah. is because if you have crap credit, we'll guide you down the path. Is we'll, crap credit a legal term? Um, let's, let's Google it. Okay. Give it a goog. All right, let's get a um, goog. So <laughs> oh, we, could, we could coin that. Yeah, let's give it a goog. <clears throat> actually, we can't. I stole it. <clears throat> so um, when we pull your credit, we're actually going to guide you down the path. So if your credit is not good and it doesn't qualify, we're going to do what we can on our side because we have simulators. So we're going to plug in the data. We're going to figure out what credit cards we can mess around with, what, da what debt we can get rid of, how much it's going to take to pay off to get you to approved status. And within our scope, if we're able to get you approved, we will. Outside of that, if you're someone who has missed uh, credit card payments, had some cars repoed, maybe had foreclosures in the past, filed bankruptcy, whatever the case may be, it may be out of our scope. What's which up, Caesar Dom? Great to see you. Yeah, yeah. Ruby, what's up? And Taco Dom. Over Taco here Dom Instagram. over there. What's up, Taco yeah. Dom? This um, is a Dom kind of day. <laughs> Brie Guy, what's and up, I'm Chris Guy? Dom. So um, we'll, got, we'll actually refer you to someone that does credit repair, okay? And if you already know you, have, you need help with your credit, you can go to the link yeah. in our bio, click on Fix My Credit. They'll walk you down the path. But... If we can get you into a home, we will. If not, we'll send you to a pro. Our yeah. goal is to get you into a house. It's not to just put you yeah. in, you know, somewhere out yeah. there. We want to make sure you're on the right path always. What's Brie Guy? What's up, Brie Guy? Hey, by the way, I used to be very cautious when I'm like, they're like, hey, do you have to do a pull, a hard credit pull? I used to be like, well, in order to actually do this, I, I do have to do a, a, a credit pull. And the only way that we can do it is if we can do that. After enough clients that I've been through, I'm like, they say, do you have to do a hard credit pull? Yes. And if that's not okay with you, you can call me when it is. Christian and it's Noel. just that fast. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that fast. No. And they're like, yeah. okay. Yeah. See you. Bye. Yeah. I got I got a lot. I'm like, literally, when we're done with this, we got a bunch of people that want to get qualified. Here's the catch. If you give us all the documents, all of them, right up front, all of them, we're going to dig in and we're going to do probably two, three hours on that loan and make it qualified. But if you only give us 90%, you, you, that's like bringing 90% of the mortgage. It's not paid. It's not enough. I can't do anything. So I start a file. It gets sloppy. Then you give me a little bit more data. And then I kind of fix the file. And then we're like, hey, can you talk to me? And I talk to me. And it kind of goes into limbo. So the right way to do it, give us everything right up front. If you do, when we sit down and we dig into the loan, we don't have to ever come back to it. And that, we get a lot of clients who are like, hey, you know, I sent you a little more, sent you a little more. I'm friendly with them. I talk to them. But if you're in the line, you're in line. And somebody who gave me all the documents right now, right up front, they're at the front of the line because they might be in escrow tonight. Yep. And <clears throat> Christian Noel, yeah. she says, are things like Afterpay and Klarna bad to use to have on your bank statements? Yes. They are killing deals. Literally killing deals. How? Can't get past underwriting. How? Here's what it is. So you buy something online. Let's say you order some flowers for your lady, okay? okay. And it's 150 bucks. Okay. And you're like, pay 150 bucks or 
three payments of $50 over the next three months. A lot of people are choosing that three payment method. That gets added to your debt to income ratio. It does. The underwriters are catching it. It's not flying under the radar. And it's like what Lee said earlier. Everyone's pushing the limits. No one's asking to borrow less. Everyone's trying to borrow the very most that they can. And when we get them at the top, they want more. So when they're buying their house, they're already maxed. And if they get added another $50 payment, it could push over the ratios. You no longer qualify. And many times this is coming up after a conditional approval. So after a conditional approval means you're going in for final clear, clear to close approval. And in this phase, it's like last minute, a lot of this information is getting brought up and a lot of people aren't qualifying because of it. So here's my recommendation to you. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Pay the price of whatever it is because mm -hmm. many of these purchases aren't real big purchases. They're under $100, maybe a couple hundred dollars, and it's giving you a monthly payment. <clears throat> and people are stacking these things. So they're buying this and buying that and buying this and buying that. And next thing you know, you have an additional $400 <coughs> a month in payments, and it is affecting you. So that is a good question to ask your people. Hey, are you doing these afterpays? Are yeah. you doing this Klarna's? Because if they are, it does affect their in debt to income ratio. And you're welcome, Christian. And don't hide the things from if there's something out there. We don't know unless you tell us. And we will pull credit. And if it didn't show up on the credit, but you know, you should tell us. Mm -hmm. You should. Here's why. Because we will package the loan off the data that we have, and then we'll send it to an underwriter. But an underwriter pulls things that we don't. We don't have access to. And they'll find it. Name one. Uh, IRS debt. Okay, cool. How do you find that? Um, Statement identity. Statement identity is one of them. Yeah. Lexus Nexus is Lex another one. Lexus, Lexus, Lexus Nexus is another one. Give me one more. Cavers. Child support. Cavers is another oh. one. So they have different underwriters have different ways of finding out data that we don't. Now, if you told us, we will already have prepped this file for that. We're like, hey, you know, I filed bankruptcy, but it's not showing up on my credit report. Awesome. When? Get me the paperwork. I'm going to prepare for it because the underwriter is going to find it. They are going to find it. Oh, I owe child support. Okay. How much is it court ordered? Ah, they're going to find it. Let me work on it so that we can make sure that your file goes through even with these challenges. But the only way we will know is if you tell us. Wow, we're almost at 3,000 likes. So let's see if we get the 4,000 before dude, whoever. the end. Wow, I appreciate you guys. Like, share. How, what is like? I don't understand. I don't know. Is that heart? I think it's Help hard. me. Somebody on TikTok who's a TikTok genius here is like heart. The, is that when you double tap the screen? That's awesome. Thank you guys. We appreciate you very much. We really are trying to give you honest knowledge, real knowledge. I'm even trying to help out my competitive loan officers, the ones who are out there who are trying to learn this business. Difficult business, by the way. You can't just step in and go, hey, I see all these guys. They drive Ferraris. They're loan officers. Yeah, some of them do. Some of them do. Most of them fail. Most, most people that join the loan business, what percentage do you think fail? Mm, high, probably 70. I would say 80. 80% of loan officers that pass their NMLS license and they go out to go like, hey, I can really calculate income very good. That's only a tiny piece of it. <clears throat> a larger piece is can you get business and can you make a loan work that nobody else can make work? Why? <coughs> here's, the other, here's the other thing. So loan officers across <clears throat> the board, uh, data is all over the place right now, but the last piece that I had read is that 70% 70, 70 of loan officers from coast to coast have left the business. Left the business? And I think it was a million loan officers to start with, and we're down mm -hmm. to 300,000. So there's the very nation. few loan officers, and then once you get one, if you have the wrong loan officer, it can hurt you really bad. I mean, really bad. And you'll be like, oh, it's too bad I sold. No, it's not just that. It's not you just lost your loan officer. You hurt a buying agent, a selling agent, escrow, a buyer, a seller. No, you're the buyer. You hurt a seller. You actually did hurt yourself. But all because you had a bad LO. A bad LO is trying to make a commission. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Elite <clears throat> Joshua, what happened to my uncle was he got a new iPhone while waiting for clear to close, and then he got denied. So. Yeah, that's one that you would. How do you tell? I tell people, don't why? take out any debts. Don't take out any loans. I don't tell them, don't get a new phone. Why? But a new phone is a monthly payment. A monthly payment, if you're right on the line, they're not like, hey, well, you're close enough. If you don't make it. You don't make it. That's yeah, it. But why? How, wh that hit his credit? He financed a phone? Because yeah. they, cell phones don't factor in buying a house, just like gas bill, water bill, or your the gas that you put in your car. They don't factor. Unless you're buying maybe a VA loan because there's something called a yeah, residual yeah, yeah, calculation. Yeah. But why? Did he finance it? Did he put yeah. it on credit? Yeah, that's a, that's a 
tough one, man. That I mean, that would break my heart. I would I would actually immediately go into damage control in that situation. Oh, yeah, save it. Yeah, immediately go into damage control. Can I take it back? That's what I'd be saying. Can I take that iPhone back? iPhone's not that important. Well, Plus, I got a iPhone six that still works. Not just that. An iPhone is okay. Fifteen hundred bucks is an iPhone. You can get you can get a, a gift from someone real quick. Hopefully, you have someone that you can get fifteen hundred bucks from, yeah. or three people to get five hundred bucks from. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to ch- to to solve this. But you, you finance it. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's insane. We want to help you. Anybody, even if you're even if you're not doing your loan with us, we'd like to help you. We understand the guidelines. We deal with problems. Every day. Give me some more do nots, man. Because that's day. a do not. Give <clears throat> do me a not. do not. Do not when you're in escrow or shopping for a house. What Don't, should you not like, do? Like, hey, I'm about to check out at Kohl's. Do you want to save 15% on your entire purchase? Do not. Do not do that. What else? Hey, you're at Lowe's. I want to save 15% at Lowe's. Do not. All right, cool. What else? All right, cool. Hey, I was thinking about trading my car in and getting a new car. Do not. Even if it's the same monthly payment. Really do not. <laughs> Wait a minute. What? It's, but it's the same monthly payment. Do not. Do not? You're going to pull your credit, and it could affect your purchase. Cool. Uh, MasterCard, MasterCard says they can lower my payment. Do not. MasterCard says they can give me a credit line increase. Do not. Okay, cool. Why not? Why do not? <clears throat> but what about, what about? hey, I got a nice, big, beautiful house, and I need to fill it with furniture. Do not. Yeah, do <laughs> not. Do not. Do not. Hey, I, I'm about to buy that house. I need new furniture. Where are you guys located? Cisco V. He's right here. I'm right here. We're located right here, right behind that sign, Riverside, California. We do business in all 50 states. How, How many? many? All 50. Where? United States of America. America. I love America. America. With M. America. America. F. Yeah. M. U. R. Cool. We're located. Cisco, you can come see us if you want. We've had many people drive in their documents because they just want to see if we're real. Mm-hmm. I get this often, by the way. I'll talk yeah. to somebody after a live. They're like, I feel like I'm talking to a celebrity. I'm like, all right, I'll sell you a signature if you want. But in the meantime, I got to make a living and let me get you a house. <laughs> Some will say this is AI. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, at one hour, uh, TikTok makes us do this puzzle thing where you have to slide a puzzle piece to make sure it's just not a video rolling in the background. So weird. I'm in Ontario, California. Cisco, we will help you. Are you looking for a house? Right down the are you street. a realtor? Are you a loan officer? What are you doing? We want to help you. Right down the 15. <clears throat> right, right, down, down the 15. right down. The f- right up to 15 in that case. Well, we're down. He's up. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Christian right Noel, up. does your credit score usually drop after purchasing a new home? For a month or two, yes. And then it goes up a lot, kind of a lot. Why? Because there's three major verticals, three major verticals, maybe a fourth. Here's the three verticals. Automobile. So if you have that vertical and you have automobile payment, hey, you check that box. Credit cards. And if you have credit cards, you check that box. Mortgage. If you have mortgage, you check that box. And then there's a weird one that kind of works and kind of does it. student loans. So student loans, if you have those, (laughs) check the box. Kind of, kind of, kind of. But if you're only working in automobile and credit cards, it's hard to get a really, it's hard to get to the 800 number. It's really hard. But if you have mortgage, get to the 800. That's interesting. Luna and Bagheera said because people go to sleep on TikTok, so they make sure that you complete the puzzle. (laughs) Yeah, I guess. I've never seen, I'm not on TikTok enough. Yeah, we're like, hey, uh, well, I've watched some other loan officers, and, and some of them are just boring. They're smart. But they're boring. They're just like arguing with the people. They're like, yeah, I can do it with 10000 Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, call me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I, I wouldn't watch you. It sucks. Well, let me ask yeah, them. Let's I, ask it's them. crazy. On yeah. a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best, how would you rate our show? Yeah, how are we doing? Yeah, we're trying. We're trying. Like, you feel my energy. You feel it. I kind of am this way naturally, and I love fighting with people. I love Loves fighting on fighting facts. With people. I love fighting Loves. with facts. I do. I'm like a UFC guy. He's like, thank you. I was like, hey, we're 10. Thank 10. You. We appreciate you. I love you. Give somebody that I'm, I'm like honest. A UFC honest. guy is like, hey, let's go into the ring. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I don't care whether I get paid. Let's just go fight. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I like, I because I have a lot of facts, and I know that there's so much bullshit out there. Yep. There's so much crap. And there's like loan officers who are back there going, well, like the Dream for All program. I watch all these guys jump on here like, hey, you don't understand how good this Dream for All program is. In the back of my mind, I'm like, I see how you can say it, but probably not. 
hey, you better hurry up and call me because I'm an authorized loan officer for the Dream for All program. I'm like, yeah, so is everybody. Um, they're like, ah, and, and I sit there and I'm like, I can't believe this is the shit they're putting out. So I just say, hey, listen, the Dream for All, it's okay. It's all right. It's it, uh, authorized. Any major bank is authorized for the Dream for All program. Don't think, don't take a victory lap with that. Come on, man, sell some real facts. If you're going to talk about the Dream for All program, put the pros and the cons. The pros and the cons are simple. It's pros and the cons. So here's the pro. They will help you with $100,000 out of 20% down, 20% down. So out of $500,000 house, they'll help you with hundred grand. That's a pro. Here's the con. It's not a gift. They want it back. And they want it back with interest or nay appreciation. They want it back. What? They want it back. Cool. That's all the facts. Hey, do you get it automatically? No, you got to go into a freaking lottery. That's the truth of it. It's open to tomorrow, actually. They got to go into a freaking lottery. But before you go out running around going, hey, I'm a super special loan officer <laughs> because I'm qualified to do the dream. Come on. Every freaking bank out there is qualified to do Cal Half of Products. If, unless you're a tiny little bank that's just starting, you're, don't run victory laps for that. Come on. Nope. Christian, Josh, Tasha, Luna, and Bagheera. Ten, ten, ten. We thank appreciate you, thank you, thank you guys. You. And guess what time it is? Oh, I'm Chris. Shoot. That's Lee. Oh, we've been Chris and Lee. We appreciate you guys. We are out.